Hello everyone, welcome to another Flutter tutorial. In this video we will learn about Carousel View from Flutter. The new Carousel View has been added as part of the Flutter SDK, so you no longer need to rely on third-party packages for showing carousels. So let's start. You can see in the pubspec.yaml file there is no third-party dependencies added for carousels. Next we will start by creating a screen named Home. Then replace the Home widget in the root material widget to Home widget we just created. We will add a app bar with a title and body to the Home widget. The title will say Carousel and body will be a Carousel View widget from Flutter. The Carousel widget will need a item extend and children at the minimum. So let's set the item extend to 330 and for children we will create an array in some time. Here item extend defines the width for horizontal scrolling or height for vertical scrolling of each item in the carousel. Let's create an instance of the carousel controller as well. Carousel controller controls the carousel's behavior, allowing manual navigation, for example jumping to a specific item or animating transitions. To save time, let's first create an array of images to be used in the carousel. Next, we will add this array as children of the carousel by iterating through the images using list.generate, returning an image.network widget for each item. Finally, we will refresh the app to observe its appearance. Here is our beautifully designed carousel. Next, we will set the filter quality to high and the box fit property to cover for better image rendering. Additionally, we will enhance the image loading experience by displaying a progress indicator while the image is downloading and an error view if the download fails. Now, inside the loading builder, if loading progress is null, we can return the child, which is the fully downloaded image. Otherwise, we calculate the download progress and display it in a text widget. To achieve this, we first retrieve the total bytes using loading progress .expected total bytes and the loaded bytes using loading progress .cumulative bytes loaded. Then, we calculate the progress percentage and display it in a text widget, ignoring the decimal part. Additionally, in case of an error, we override the error builder to return a text widget displaying fail to load image. Let's refresh the app to view the updates. You will notice that the image loading now includes a circular progress indicator along with a text display. Next, let's explore how to set the height of the carousel view. For that let's wrap the carousel view with a constraint box and set the constraints with a max height of 200. This will set the carousel's height to 200. Next we will check the other properties of carousel such as enable splash, enables a splash effect when an item is tapped. This is useful for providing visual feedback when a user interacts with an item. Next property is shrink extent. Shrink extent determines how much space the carousel items can shrink when scrolling. It helps control the visual effect of shrinking items as they move out of focus. And we can also set the scroll direction which is horizontal by default. We will try setting it to vertical. Since the scroll direction is vertical now, we can set a bigger height for the carousel view. Let's try 900 or you can use the media query to set the height to the height of the screen. You can see the carousel view now has the height of the screen. Let's undo it and set the scroll direction to horizontal. Next, we will explore the functionalities available using the controller. To begin, let's declare a few variables, 
item size, shrink size, total size, and previous position. Next, we override the init state method and initialize total size by multiplying item size by the number of images, representing the total width of all carousel items combined. Finally, we will update the item size and shrink size properties inside the carousel view to use these newly defined variables. Next, we will define a method to navigate to a specific slider cell using the carousel controller. We will name this method moveTo, and it will take a single parameter representing the new position. The method will use carousel controller dot jump to new position to move to the specified slide. Additionally, we will add two buttons, previous and next, at the bottom of the slider. These buttons will allow users to navigate to the previous or next slide when tapped. When the previous button is tapped, we call move to previous position if the previous position value is greater than zero. For the next button, we call move to previous position plus item size to navigate to the next slide. Let's test if this works. It appears there is an issue, the slide advances only once, even when tapped multiple times. I realize that I forgot to update previous position to new position inside the move to method. Let's update and refresh the app. It's working now, great. Next, we will optimize the next button logic to prevent overflow. To achieve this, we will calculate the new position using a variable, new position equals previous position plus item size. If new position is less than total size, we will move to the new position. OK. Refreshing the app. It looks like there is an issue. Apologies, there is an error in the code, the condition should be new position is less than total size instead. This should now be fixed. For the previous button, we will update the logic to move to previous position minus item size. Now, instead of jumping directly to a slide, we can animate the transition using carousel controller dot animate to new position. We will set the duration to one second for a smooth transition to the next slide. Additionally, you can choose any curve value to customize the animation effect. Let's update the code and see how it works. Awesome. You can now see the slides animating back and forth smoothly, it looks great. That's all for this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Thanks for watching.